Hello, faithful listeners. It's creator of the show, Pippin Abra Major, here to answer a few of your questions. So without further ado, I'm just going to jump right into it. Talvrin asks, what's the most exciting thing for you about running this podcast? Open parenthesis, all the most exciting thing that's happened, close parenthesis. <laughs> mm. uh, this is really difficult to answer. Uh, so much of it is exciting. I don't think there's a step in the process I don't like, and I'm always excited to be writing or sending out scripts or editing. Basically, all of it I love. Um, this past week or so, though, I think the coolest thing that's happened is that all of a sudden people, including you, Dalvin, actually, uh, are starting to take pieces of the show and transform them and love them in a sort of fandom kind of a way. And I've seen a couple of incredible Sam cosplays, uh, including yours, on TikTok. And I know uh, there are some people planning on doing more and more of other characters in the show. And I'm seeing people talking about it, responding to the show. And every time it just fills me up with so much emotion. Um, it's so incredible to see people taking this thing that's knocked about in my head for ages. I've sat down and worked so hard on and just running with it. Like uh, people are saying they love Sam and that's just the most incredibly exciting thing. I love Sam. I'm so thrilled that other people love my sunshine boy too. It's so amazing to think that work that I have made can inspire people to do something so creative and amazing as fan art and cosplay. It's so cool. I love it so much. Okay, Thais asks, um, I love how apparently parts of the old house can move and appear in other places. How did you come up with this idea? Were there any inspirations from other stories? Uh, this is a fun one. Uh, so first off, how did I come up with the idea? Um, an important thing for the series overall is that I want to be thinking about haunting and hauntedness a bit differently. So instead of going into a haunted house full of ghosts, what if it's the house itself that's doing the haunting? Um, so for me, that idea works really well, because when we think about ghosts really often, at least for me, uh, what we're really talking about is the idea and concept of trauma. And places where terrible things happen do sort of haunt you. Uh, you'll be somewhere and there'll be a hallway and it's like a hallway where something bad happened to you. And it's like you're back there for a moment. And, um, you know, it's quite a natural step for me to then go, well, what if the place you live now is slowly, literally transforming in ways and means into a place where something terrible had happened to you in your past. Um, yeah, and this idea of the inescapability of the past and how stuff that happened years and years ago still has an impact on the present is really central to the themes of the show. Um, and how decisions, stuff like how decisions made by your parents can change your life even when they aren't there anymore, that kind of thing. It's really important to what the center of the show is about. So yeah, if, yeah, it comes from this idea of, of being haunted by a place essentially um yeah there are stories that have influenced the way the impossible house works um i actually hang on i don't think it's been called the impossible house in the show yet <laughs> um that's what it will be referred to by characters mostly sam there's a video game called control i think which played a part in developing uh, ideas of spaces themselves as being haunted and the show The Haunting of Hill House which has a malicious space which moves and changes to be the worst it can possibly be for each person there but also at the same time insidiously develops these sort of codependent relationships with the people inside of it and those things have been really influential uh, in terms of like how the logic of the impossible house works and so is the idea of the Minor Tools Labyrinth from Greek mythology and this one mountain goat song <laughs> The House That Tripped Blood <laughs> So those have all been really influential uh, on the way that the house works and in terms of like the idea itself. Okay, Avery asks, uh, one of the things I love most about Spirit Box Radio is the personalities of each character and how they all interact, especially Sam and Kitty. What's the hardest part of building a character? Thank you, Avery. I'm really glad that you love them. Um, what's the hardest thing about building a character? Um, okay, so I'm not actually sure what bit is hardest, and it's different with each of them, I think. To give a cheats answer to that question, uh, each character has it, their own things that are hardest about them. Um, as a creator, for me uh, in particular, it's the characters I tend to start with. So I spend a lot of time working out what they're like, what their interests are, that kind of thing. And they'll each have their own way of thinking and responding to situations, which I try to lay out as consistently as possible. Uh, what can be really challenging is maintaining that consistently when you have a plot that has to have reveals in specific places, like Spirit Box Radio does, because it's such a mystery, as well as being horror and weird fiction. Um, for example, there's a scene early on 
where I wanted to have Kitty sort of monologue, but that's just not something that Kitty would do, I don't think. She's got this kind of quiet intelligence about her and she doesn't actually speak up all that much. Uh, Anna is the more talkative one. Uh, she's the most talkative of the three Ed Enfield siblings, I'd say. Um, and in my episode plan, I had Kitty sort of doing this big grand monologue with flowery type language in it. And then when I was reading it through, it just did not seem like a very Kitty thing for her to be doing. And I realized that it just wasn't going to work having her do that. I needed to break it down into segments and make her say less. Um, so yeah, that was more difficult. And that, yeah, that, but that was quite hard. Um, and that's sort of an example of how it's, you know, different things with different characters are challenging in their own right. Um, but broadly speaking, yeah, it's making those characters work with the plots that you have. Um, ideally, they all kind of feed into each other and they work together. And um, I, I think that's true in this story. At least I hope it's true. Um, but yeah, that's one aspect of it. Okay. Uh, Anonymous asks, how old is Sam? Uh, a nice easy one. Um, he's 22. Uh, Sam's birthday is the 13th of November 1998. Uh, Ripley, who plays Rytidia Delphus, asks, of the currently introduced characters, who'd win in a fight? Uh, not Rytidia. Another anonymous person asks, what's your favourite part of the process? Um, I'm assuming you mean of making the show. Okay, so this is a bit similar to the first question, but different enough that I am going to answer it. And I'm hard pressed, again, to choose um, my favourite part. But I think that maybe my favourite moment is the first time I hear an actor reading a new script in character. Um, <laughs> it just brings me so, so much joy to hear these people come to life like that. Uh, everyone involved in the show uh, is mad talented and I'm so incredibly lucky to have them on board. And the cast actually jumps up from six people in part one all the way up to 15 people in part two. Um, I'm so excited for you to hear all these tons of people. It's going to be really cool and fun and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, that, I think I think that's my favourite part. Yeah, is hearing people read lines in character for the first time. Like, it just, they bring other dimensions to these people that I just, you know, it's it's a collaborative process to build the character. And as much as I write and I'm the one with all of the uh, the knowledge, etc., cetera, um, the actors are the ones that really bring them to life. And it's just fantastic to, to hear it happen in real time. It's very cool. Um, and our final anonymous question is, uh, do I know how the show ends? Yes, I do. And I will say no more on that. Um, Headbanging Hobbits asks, does Sam Enfield is gay? <laughs> Uh, does Sam Enfield is gay? Uh, you know what? No. <laughs> does Sam Enfield is pansexual? <laughs> but yes, also in a more umbrella sense, <laughs> does Sam Enfield is in fact gay? Yes. Um, yeah, in that umbrella, LGBTQ plus sense. Yes, he is pansexual, I would say. Um, and this is a slightly weirdy, weirdly adapted question that I'm paraphrasing here from Alex, who plays Anna on the show. Um, but she asks, what are my predictions for the next few months about the show? I mean, all of my predictions so far have been wrong. <laughs> Bear this in mind. I didn't think this many people would be tuning in at this stage. And so it's amazing to have this kind of fan response we're already having. So thank you so much to all of you listening out there. It really does make my day whenever I see you talking about the show, even if you're yelling at me, <laughs> especially if you're yelling at me. I mean, like as long as it's polite excited nice yelling and um, not so much fan of the angry yelling not that i've actually had any of that yet but i'm sure it'll come um but yes uh, <laughs> um predictions okay so the one that springs to mind is that i think we will have a fanfic on ao3 two weeks after episode 27 for reasons yeah uh, i'm actually pretty confident about that one if it's not two weeks after it will be I think the first fic will be prompted by events that happen in episode 27. Um, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> um, okay, and the final question uh, I'm going to answer is an another form from Talvrin. And it's just simply, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> and I think it's regarding the mid-season finale. And <laughs> yeah, I am sorry, I know. Uh, there has been yelling on the internet <laughs> about the mid-season finale. I sort of expected there would be. Um, it's the first time Sam's been directly engaged in conflict like that. And it's a big twist to find out Madame Marie's fate. It's all quite horrid. And I do want to say as a sort of, I don't know, a balm, I suppose, to the mid-season finale, that there are parts of this story that will be difficult and emotional like that. 
Uh, but the journey to where we end up is hopefully going to be worth it. Um, the story isn't a tragedy, and if it is a tragedy in any way, it's not a tragedy for Sam. Um, I can't promise he will be the same sunshine boy at the end as he is at the beginning, but everybody changes, right? <laughs> um, the show is going to be three seasons long, um, and depending on a few decisions I'm yet to nail down, uh, yeah, it's three seasons long, and I've known the end from the beginning, as I've already said. It's a place, it's one of the places I started out with the story, so it's actually more of a process of working out where in Sam's journey the story, the story, the story begins more than anything else. Um, yeah, so all the pieces do come together and hopefully the journey to that ending will be a good one, even though it's not necessarily going to be always a nice and easy one. Um, yeah, I do also want to say that this is not a story about how being nice and sweet like Sam is, um, is inevitably a path to being doomed and tragic because I'm not about that. Yeah, the journey will be rough at times, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, and we do deal with some heavy themes and some complicated stuff um, is coming up in the near future, but I promise you the ending won't be devastating, I hope. So hopefully um, <laughs> that answers the question, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah it, it's one of those things where it's i don't want to understate like because it does go to dark places obviously um i say obviously but i think the horror that i like the, the sort of horror that i like does go to quite dark places and isn't afraid to deal with issues that are complicated and i'm trying to deal with some complicated stuff but i think the end is you know it's it's not a tragic ending it's not a devastating ending and the whole thing is designed to build us to that point. So, yeah, we'll get there and hopefully we'll have fun as well as any pain <laughs> that happens on the way. Um, but yeah, it's not a tragedy. Okay. So this has been really fun and I'm definitely going to do another one of these in the future because, yeah, I had a great time reading through these. It was really fun to gather them up as well. Um, and hopefully you had fun listening to me answer these questions. Uh, and yeah, so for now, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in and getting spooky with us so far. Um, all of the episodes going forward will be of the higher audio quality of the last couple of episodes of part one. So um, we got a new mic. I was using that new mic from episode 15 but it took a little while for me to get to grips with it if that makes sense uh so yeah um but i think i've got the hang of it now so hopefully all of i say hopefully definitely all of the episodes going forward will be of that higher quality of audio um yeah and that's only possible because of support from listeners like you um so thank you so much for that um, if you do want to support the show, you can do so over on patreon.com forward slash hanging sauce studios, where we have a bunch of stuff like behind the scenes uh, photos and director's notes. And we have a bonus Patreon exclusive behind the scenes uh, podcast called Hanging with the Sloths. And I put a new episode of that up the other day and someone said it was really interesting. So, yeah. Uh, and I'll talk about stuff like um, being essentially a one man band because I, I do almost everything behind the scenes at the show. So. Um, I'll talk about stuff like that and the most recent episode I talked about this shift up from having basically no audience to having um, a couple of hundred people and the subsequent shift in the size of the cast from six people all up the way all the way up to 15 um, which is a really big perspective shift uh, yeah so if that sounds like the kind of thing that you'd be interested in if you like behind the scenes kind of stuff I do that uh, roughly once a month um, so yeah patreon is where you want to be um, uh, you can also do one-off donations or uh, other um, on ko-fi.com forward slash hanging slots um, and other than that um i know not everybody can donate and i don't want to be in that position I wanna, this content is free for a reason um, and we want to keep it free um, but if you if you can support that would be cool but don't feel any obligations to do so because i know obviously with pandemic -y things and even non-pandemic -y things uh, a lot of people are in tough spots so yes please take care of yourselves first before thinking of us <laughs> um uh, and if you want to help us out in other non-financial ways you can share the show tell your friends about us uh, rate and review us wherever you're listening now or on Podchaser or on little notes or on any of those 
podcasty places where people go and find podcasts. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, interact with us on there. That's really fun. Um, I'm quite active on Twitter now um, under the Hanging Sloths official one, uh, which is at Hanging Sloths. Uh, and there's a Spirit Box Radio one, which is pretty quiet at the moment, but we're building up some stuff and some cool, fun things will be happening on there in the future too. So that's at Spirit Box Radio for more show world content and at Hanging Sloths for... Uh, me talking drivel essentially um yes um there's yeah that's pretty much it uh thank you so much for listening so far everybody and uh for now say the sp- for now stay spooky and i will speak to you again next week mm-hmm.